Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 55. <clears throat> Took a little bit of a break. Uh, the Path of Exile incursion flashback race happened, and so I played a little bit of that. Sort of slacked on my personal project duties. But, <clears throat> you know, it's not about how many times you fall down, it's about how many times you get back up. So today we are going to be playing around with the idea of this Inception zoom-in level swap idea. Um, we kind of got nothing working last time. Uh, we made a little bit of progress at the end there. But I've been thinking about it, and the first thing we want to do, as always, is minimize the number of variables. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get it working with a vanilla Unity cube, right? Just one cube to another cube, see if we can get that transition to work where it looks like I'm zooming in when the camera's not really moving. <clears throat> um, so that's the first step, only cube. If that works, I know that there's something else wrong with the shader that I wrote for my cubes. <clears throat> I believe I wrote a kind of weird shader when I was doing the cube filtering to try and like I don't know, make some cubes invisible for more difficult levels. I completely scrapped, well, I put it on the back burner for now. But I was thinking about it, and it's going to be best if we set this up like a stack, right? So here's our menu is going to be at the bottom of the stack, and our overworld will be here, and the level that we're in is here. This stack setup will allow me to remember which scene loaded into, you know, maybe like a sub-level. And then once this sub-level is done, then we can zoom from this scene up the stack one item and go directly back to where we came from. And that gives us sort of that inception, <clears throat> oh, I dove inwards from here, and when I'm done, I arrive out at the exact same spot. So simple little use of a stack. This is probably going to be very simple to set up, I hope. I'm most interested about testing this first and then getting this to work. But putting it all in a stack will actually make the um, the experience a lot more streamlined, I feel. People will intuitively understand what's happening there. Um, let's see. So I guess let's just do it with normal cube. I'm going to turn off my main menu cube. And let's just do a good old-fashioned cube. And I don't remember how I actually went there. Was it enter? OK. Um, <clears throat> so that does kind of look like we p enter. Uh, yeah, that doesn't look too great. Hmm. What's our timing here? Target scale 100, duration 3, 20. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. And of course we can we can fudge the numbers to make it look okay, but I also kind of want the <clears throat> the cube to sort of start to alpha out. I've got our meshes and we also have our text here. This is our mesh renderer. That's using this font material. Hmm. I mean, we could do a post-processing effect on this. That seems a lot easier than, like, walking through and um, 
manually changing every single material instance to have some sort of alpha. And when this happens, yeah, it looks like I've got back face on. We can see our where's our camera? That's interesting. Our camera is like, wow, <clears throat> it's like right there. <laughs> huh. Wonder if I set this to 19. What's going to happen here? What part of the cube is is this even? What are you? Oh, that's this cube. Lol. Okay, sure. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this. Let's take a look at our cube core mat, custom fade shader. Z right off. Still looks a little bit goofy there. Um, let's see. Do to do to do. Um, Unity shader. Backface culling from June 2018. By default, backface culling is on. Yeah, I thought you had to turn it off manually. Do I have a cull in here? I do not. What if I turn you off? Oh my gosh. Alt tab. There we go. Oh. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um. Interesting. Oh no. Cube core mat. Nothing.
So nothing here. <clears throat> Interesting. So for our surface, we get the main texture, in texture, set the albedo for the out, metallic and glossiness. Pragma surf, surface surf standard, full forward shadows. Let's see. Subshader tags, what do we got here? <clears throat> Background, this render key was rendered before any others. Geometry. Okay, so we want Q. Wait, no, Q. Render type, what are my render types? Is is an opaque, opaque shader. Okay, yeah, fake. As you can tell, I'm not very good with shaders. I kind of understand what's going on here. Main texture is nothing. We take in the UV main text, multiply it by the color. Why are we having a texture come in? I guess by default it's just white. That makes sense. Line 50. Really? We maybe need this. I'm just going to stick with Pragma Surface Surf Standard. Hey, there we go. Oh, and it looks good too. Hey, oh yeah, buddy. That makes me happy. Let's see what the spin looks like. Oh! Oh dear. What did we do? <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, that didn't do anything good. Wait, is an error in there? No. Oh, Tage. Not Tage. Tags. Hmm. So that Z right off is what borked it.
Hmm. What about opaque minus one? So draw this guy first, and then maybe these ones next. Huh. That is super bizarre. Credits should not be able to be seen. Let's do some old school. I'm going to copy everything, and I'm just going to lean on Control Z. So we had render type transparent, Q transparent. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> Here we had full forward shadows and alpha, and this we didn't change. You can see it sort of goofs up the way we're drawing things, but now... Okay, so let's paste this back in, and let's do full... Oops. Full forward shadows. And this was in the transparent queue. Even though it's not transparent, let's see what happens now. I'm going to make sure the syntax is the same. There we go. Hey. Hey, looks good. Let's see. Dang it. <laughs> what mesh renderer are these guys using? Path wall mat. And this path wall mat is also using the fade shader. Okay. Background quad, just a normal transparent shader standard. Mesh renderer font material, sure. <laughs> so what else is the difference? We had render type transparent. Oh, no, no, no. We had Q transparent here. I don't know why this would matter. Hey, it does matter. Nice. Okay, looking good. I'm going to move the camera. And this is going to look wrong, but I just want to see. OK. Yeah, that doesn't look too terrible. 
Uh, where is my world? Zero, 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 my camera. Some distance away. Why my camera pivot is scaled, I will never know. Sure. Um, let's try and get the zoom to move the world to the camera. Zoom in, update. Um, as always, Thunderbutt decides it's time to start licking herself as soon as I start recording, right? Every time, it's like she's she's waiting for it. It's got our target scale. Um, we'll have a start position and a target position. So when we begin, Let's get the start position is equal to what well, should be zero, 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 but you never know. We'll play it safe for now. And we'll just do this as a camera main transform. Now uh, this would be a vector three lerp. Oh, insert key. You are the worst key on the keyboard. And let's put our rotation back to zero. So even inside, we've got blue and then nothing. That is quite bizarre. Um, that's even more weird. Well, I guess because we're scaling it up, but why is it moving on the Y? Hmm. <laughs> I do think we're going to need to fade all of this out. That's the only way to make it look good. How am I going to do that? So I want it to zoom and fade out. And at the same time, this one is growing. We don't need to fade this one in, I think. Hmm, I could do closest point on the cube. That seems like a lot of overkill. So if here's my camera. And once the edge of the cube, you know, passes the camera, then destroy it? I don't know. What's an easy thing to test? 
I mean, it's not that easy. Um, what we could do is, like I said, a post-processing effect, but the problem here is, well, it's many-fold. Oh, geez. Because we've got our... Um, Every scene has a core level objects. And inside that core level objects is another main camera. And this is important for testing, so I can just like open level two and then have everything there that I need. So I can just test level two without being like, okay, splash screen, menu, overworld select, level two, test. That's a bad, a bad thing. I mean, we could just drop this in here for testing purposes, and then when we're done, we could kick it out. Um, not a huge fan of that, but it might be a, an option. <laughs> so we need a way to have scene one and all the objects in the world need to scale and at the same time additively load seam 2 these guys will scale up actually scene 2 everything would also scale up so if we're going into a level, we're going deeper, everything is scaling upwards. And then when we're exiting, or we're, you know, going from a sub-level to a level, then everything's going to need to scale down. Hmm. It's got to be an easier way to do this. I feel like I'm overcomplicating the problem, which is one of my favorite, favorite things to do. What's the time on here? Okay, halfway. Simple, simple. I mean, scaling it up is pretty simple, but it looks like poop. Hmm. I mean, we could spin the cube. No. Let's just let's just fade everything out. Let's do it. Um, let's just see how that looks. So that means I'm also going to need in here all renderers. And in awake, we can say get components in children, mesh renderer, and then let's print out found renderers. Found this many renderers. What do you got for me here? Should be six, seven? Hopefully seven. Seventeen. Okay, that's fine. Um, really? Well, I guess these don't have renders, but this does, and so does this. Okay. So we got our text, our quad, and our meshes. Now, text and quad are using default Unity shaders, so they're not going to have access to my transparent bit. And I also turned off transparency, I think. Huh. This looks okay. What did I have wrong last time? 
I think this is exactly the same. I had ignore projector. Maybe that's what was part of the problem. Render type transparent. This could have been the issue. No, it wasn't. What the heck did I change? <laughs> I think I had Z right off, which I don't. I, I think that's the only thing I needed to change. What the heck? And Visual Studio is the absolute worst at formatting these CG files. It is just awful. Like, look at this crazy stuff. What are you doing, Unity? Oh my goodness. I don't even know what it's supposed to. See, look at that. Buddy, pal, friend. Get it together, man. Uh-oh. My mouse just died. Oh, man. Okay. What's well, one problem at a time? Sometimes new problems pop up, and they're a priority. Luckily, I think I'm prepared. Don't want to show the brand there unless this brand wants to pay me money for the three people who've ever watched this. Oh, now it's working again. What the heck? <laughs> okay. Hmm. Now, if that isn't a common experience, I don't know what is. The idea, it's like, oh, shoot, there's a problem. Let me go fix that problem. You spend time fixing it. You look. Well, there's no problem. It's gone now. A Schrodinger bug. Okay, but we found 17 renderers. Let's get back to it. <clears throat> we want to change the alpha of everything that has my path wall mat. Well, I got a path wall mat and a cube core mat. But they're both using my fade shader. Uh, you know, mesh renderer. Let's see what we got here. Oops. All renderers at zero dot material has property. Alpha. Is that what it's called? Maybe it's called underscore transparency. Yes. Oops. So here's actually a material that we are caring about. Um, so let's change this to material. And we'll call this. Um, Fade materials. And let's make this a dynamic list. And the reason I'm making it a list is because I don't know how many of these there will be. Hey. And then we can make a mesh renderer array here. And we'll call this render index. Oh. And we can move this up and we'll say if all renders at render index. If they have the transparency property, then we're going to add it to 
our list here. And then once we're done with this, we can say print found fadeable materials. Seven fadeable materials. Awesome. So that should be our cube here. And then one for each of the meshes on each face. Solid. Of course, this is going to be dramatically higher um, in actual levels. And then in updates, I'll do this, fade materials at material index dot set float. Transparency. Okay, so we've got this ratio that's going from zero to one, right? It's curving up like this. And we want to go from full transparency to zero. So I'm going to say one minus ratio, and that should invert our curve, meaning it goes from solid to completely. What's the word see through? Transparent. <laughs> sure. Wait a minute, where's my play? Oh no. Yeah, that's wrong. Play's going behind both of them. And that didn't work at all. Hmm. That is indeed going from 1 to 0. Exact same number in seven different places. That's what I like to see. Cube core. Transparency is at 0. 000591. So we are communicating with our cube core material. Ah, but we turned off alpha. Hey. And see, now it's goofy again. Now we got that goofiness back. And our play button is gone. Where's where's our where's our play menu text? It's there. Is my camera too close? <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> well then, folks. Um, who knows if it was working or not? Yeah, this alpha was goofing us here, but we need that alpha in order to get the transparency, I believe. Yeah, we do. 
then that alpha borks us. So we might need a different way to go about doing this. Yeah, it looks terrible up here. I mean, I could change shaders at a certain point. I don't know if people would notice that little blip there. I'm not too happy with that idea. Let's just try this additive. Oh, hey, right, okay. To do blend off, source factor, add source and destination together. Blend one one. What do you got for me there? Nope, oh, still bad. <laughs> uh, this doesn't matter. Um, well, it kind of does. It's fairly important to get that working. Hmm. Well, that's not a bad idea. Well, I take that back. This could be a very bad idea. Let's talk about it. Let's, let's just say it out loud, see how it feels. Um, so currently, our camera is looking directly at our cube. This is our menu cube. And we've got play facing the camera, sure. And the player says, hey, I want to play the game. Check. <sighs> So what if the camera sort of like pew, went like this? But then the camera's moving. Yeah, I think the I don't know, is there a problem making the camera move? I think it would look better. But I could just do the opposite. Like I could move so if the camera tilts like this, I could just tilt the cube the opposite way. Just do inverse movement, I imagine. Um, but... Yeah, I mean... A little curve like this would make it a lot more visually interesting. But what would happen in the cases where we're in the level and we're looking down on our cubes? That was almost a pretty darn good cube. Would it be the same pattern? Hmm. 
<laughs> what did I say today was inception level swap? Oh yeah, we are way behind on that. We're just trying to get the the regular zoom to work. And I guess that's the hardest part of this of this plan here. It's getting the the zoom to look right or feel good. Like I said at the beginning, let's remove some variables, scenes. Test. Test. World transition. I am going to set up the lighting again. Cameras at a normal spot. Um, I believe we should, let's make our cube three simulate. Um, our main camera is perspective. We'll take orthographic. Oh, hey, that could be a problem. We set it up to be orthographic so that the, the menu items that are sliding around aren't actually looking real goofy, right? Because remember, if we set this back to perspective, yeah, play is a lot closer. Oh. I mean, it actually looks just fine. Why did I have that changed? <laughs> Dang, that looks great. I mean, we got a little bit of a wiggle. Why do we have that wiggle? <laughs> it might be in our utils. Let's take that out. Um, text face camera. Where am I doing this? Update. Let's try a fixed update here. But yeah, that perspective camera looks great. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, still pretty goofy there. That's fine. That's something that's easy to fix. Let's go back to a normal update. Oh man, I wonder if the perspective thing will fix this too. Oh! That looks great! I still don't know why our world is moving upwards. It starts here. Our camera's at zero, zero. Aha. That's a little bit weird. What the heck?
Why aren't I going directly into the center? Okay, there we go. Everything's all zeroed out now. I don't know where all that goofiness came from. There we go. Oh, yeah. Buddy, that is what I'm talking about. Um, world transition, zoom in complete. And then let's do this. We can get rid of this print here. Zero. So strange. Like, is this really zero alpha? Am I still doing one one? How much time we got? That's worth investigating. Eight minutes. <laughs> Let's see. Unity shader with transparency still visible. No shadows, transparency, boop doop doo. Doo 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 doo. -do. <laughs> 2016 man when anybody uses like if you're if you're asking a question online always avoid caps and excessive punctuation like this does not help at all It makes, like, this is a great question. C-sharp, how can I decrease opacity in Unity? I have a question. People might answer. But this is like somebody yelling or crying or complaining. Like, you know, come on, guys. One question is enough. Here we go. Exclamation point before the question. Now, that means that is a very strong question. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Yeah, we know that. Oops. This alpha one minus source alpha. Let's try this one. One one minus source alpha. Nope, that's not what I want. I don't think this will make a big difference. Hmm. <coughs> <coughs> I think that it might actually be our smoothness and metallic. 
Let's try that. I don't think, um, and switching back, we're not, we don't have that working yet. You go here. Shouldn't happen till the end. Nope, I did nothing. Sure. Do to do to do to do shader custom shader zero zero smoothness point five me. Well, it's interesting because I can't. I'm on the inside of this box here, but it's these faces. I believe this is our forward face that we're looking at. Smoothness one. I'm not even sure that this is happening. Let's double check, make super duper positive that we got the thing doing what we asked it to do, please. Huh. Bizarre. Smoothness did not change. But I told it to change. Smoothness. Did I misspell that? Underscore smoothness. Oh, glossiness, buddy, dude. What is that? Is come on. What a goofy decision. I, I blame the default shader. I'll blame Unity on that one. That was not my doing. Oh. <clears throat> okay. I think we'll call it a day, but we did make some progress. We really did. Um, the next goal, instead of just popping to that glossiness of one, smoothness, um, we're probably going to lerp that as well. And we're not going to start lerping that immediately. Um, we're probably going to, in fact, what we can do is when we add the next scene, this is when we can also um, start lerping the glossiness. <sighs> Dang it, see, I just got rid of that term and now I'm using it. Lerp smoothness. Begin. <laughs> it would be nice to come up with a way to make a marker like this so I could just sort of drag it back and forth and see what what that feels like. Although I guess that marker could just be a number between 0 and 1. We don't really need like a visual um visual tool for that. It'd be nice, but not necessary. Cool. Well, I think that's it for today. Uh, I'm pretty happy with what we did. There was a lot of struggling and floundering around, but sometimes life is like that. If you're thrown in the deep, you better learn to swim, as Roke would say. So, I think that's it for me today. Have a good one.